All right. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for coming to our workshop today, Rendezvous on the L. This program is a part of our Artist Run Chicago exhibition at the Hyde Park Art Center. Uh, Artist Run Chicago 2.0, this is the second rendition. The first one was done in 2009, and it features over 50 Artist Run spaces in Chicago, as well as Milwaukee. Really great show. The exhibition is up currently through November Fourth, and it's by exhibition viewing appointment only. So hopefully you all have a chance to check out the show. The entire building has been taken over by art and different art spaces, and it's a really great way to give a platform to these wonderful diverse voices. I'm going to talk a little bit about Mujeres Mutantes, who is a resident artist at our center. Uh, Mujeres Mutantes is an all-women Latinx art collective with roots all across Chicago's south and west sides. They were founded in 2012 by Naomi Martinez, Martinez and Delilah Salgado after years of dialogue, collaborations, some dating back to 1995. The group's initial goal was to be a platform for collaborations and exhibitions with other like-minded women who were already working independently to challenge the status quo in the art community. They're an eclectic group of multidisciplinary artists. They're local business owners, mothers, and educators who believe that public art nurtures community and that creative expression is crucial to our self-actualization. Today, their mission is to create opportunities to empower other women to make art, share stories, and promote art as a healing practice for communities affected by street violence and domestic abuse. The collective members are Delilah Salgado, Gloria Talamantes, Naomi Martinez, and Adriana Pena. In this workshop, they'll explore the role of artists as mediators and culture creators for the community. They will share their personal stories of using the train as a conduit to connect to other communities within the arts and hip hop culture, and write short stories and poetry to share, and contribute to a virtual zine, Rendezvous on the L, the metaphorical place where we can all meet now in the year of COVID-19 and the nation's current political climate. This writing workshop is hosted by Delilah Salgado and Gloria Talamantes. And with that, I will hand it over to our two lovely ladies here. Thank you all so much. Enjoy. Thank you for participating. Um, in this virtual work, slides to have Chicago life in art and politics. Um, Gloria, can you uh, put the next slide, please? I am going to introduce you, okay. even though um, we had a really great introduction by Sierra. Thank you so much. Thank you to the Hyde Park I agree. Center. Thank you. Thank you to Artists Run Chicago 2.0. It's such an amazing exhibit. If you all haven't seen it, please, please, please um, visit Hyde Park Art Center online um, and um, schedule your visit because it's it's really an amazing exhibit that you don't want to miss. Um, so Delilah Salgado is a multidisciplinary artist, mother of three, activist and co-founder of Mujeres Mutantes, an all-women's arts collective from Chicago. The, goal, the goals of the collective are to empower the community through uh, the arts program, inclusive curated shows, and fostering relationships that create positive urban cultural experiences through collaborations. Along with her collaborative work, um, she has, uh, with the collective, uh, Delilah's Artivism has been uh, through working with youth in Pilsen um, in Chicago, where she taught graffiti and street art. Um, and I will add, um, when she when it wasn't uh, when it wasn't very uh, welcoming to um, have graffiti and street art classes, and I just wanted to throw that in there because uh, as a teaching artist, um, we had you know uh, quite a hard time sometimes to get our programs funded um, if they had mm -hmm. the word graffiti in it, and so mm -hmm. that's part of the political <laughs> piece that we want to talk about too uh, here and there. But um, she co-founded the annual We Are Hip Hop Festival mm -hmm. for uh, students in Pilsen. And um, struggling to juggle her family life and art, she has found a work-life uh, balance through healing and encouragement, as well as ongoing support from her husband, family, and art sisters. That'd be me. 
Delilah <laughs> has been able to travel to Panama to paint a mural, create a body of work for her solo show at Pilsen Outpost titled Intergalactic Space Goddess and completed a mural through Chicago Public Art Group. Known artist Hector Lee. Currently an artist in residence with her art collective at Hyde Park Art Center, um, where she recently completed a diorama mural creation, A Beautiful Journey. Along with members of the collective, Delilah joins the Public Public Art Group, a dream of hers when she was 15 years old. Delilah has served on the LSC of Velma Thomas uh, Early Childhood Center for the past five years, going on six. She loves the Reggio Emilia approach to education and is returning to her inner child's hundred languages and is utilizing the philosophical approach in her art making. Delilah is currently working on cultivating a body of work based on indigenous mythology, Jungian theories, and the work of Joseph Campbell. And Thank you. I will, uh, <laughs> Thank you. I will go to the next slide. <laughs> All right. What Thank you so can? much. I know it was like I'm mouthful. <laughs> Okay, this is, this is, it says no series, but this is, um, this is some of my work, some paintings. Um, this, that's from the Meeting of Styles, A Woman Graffiti Mural. That I painted while I was pregnant. I was seven months pregnant. <laughs> you can tell on the photo. Um, but these types of collaborations, um, I mean, not just painting, I, I just really like working with women, painting with women, um, uh, collaborating. Um, I don't know if I said that already, but um, definitely like collaborating a lot. Like I love that um, female energy. And I think that's, I'm drawn to like painting. Uh, I'm, I'm very, I feel like we need to see the, the goddess, the, you know, that divine feminine energy because we're surrounded by so much masculine energy all the time. And I feel like painting these goddesses, um, we need like a balance, you know, in, in the world. And I feel like that the image and um, the need, I, I remember um, when I first, I feel like I met the goddess was um, when I was at the Art Institute and I, um, I was supposed to draw something um, for my 2D class, and I met Parvati, and she was the stone figure, you know, in the museum, and I could smell like the earth, the way the way it just drew me to 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 her. And ever since then, I've just been creating these these goddesses in my work, and um and I feel like I see goddesses in my life now, like walking living goddesses, and so I want to work with them and like vibe. With um, so that's like my work in a brief synopsis uh can we do the next slide which i believe is now um gloria's you know yeah next <laughs> thank you <laughs> gloria glow talamantes gloria glow talamantes is a first generation mexican american graffiti artist writer educator and cultural worker from la villita her art consists of aerosol mural painting, printmaking, photo documenting, public art curation, and organizing to promote community building, self-actualization, and collective healing. She has self-funded several murals across the city and is the founder of the Brown Wall Project, a project in response to the graffiti blasters brown buff walls across Chicago. Gloria also works as a community newspaper editor for a nonprofit publication in back of the yard. It's called The Gate News. Now, Gloria, this is like, you know, a great brief like bio, but there's so much more to everything that you've done and, and like how much heart you put into everything that you do and for the community. And I just wanted to say that and add that. Um, Thank you. But now she, Gloria can present her work. You're welcome. Thank you. Um, thank you so much. You're um, welcome. So I added... Um, I wanted to have, um, sorry, I keep on messing up the presentation here. Um, I wanted to add uh, a piece that was um, 
semi-personal but not really um, to this um, presentation because it really um, during the, the stay at home order, which started actually on my birthday, <laughs> um, I was having a really um, hard time um, trying to process everything that was happening. Um, and um, I had this uh, project due for the CTA, um, which uh, it's these two pieces that are also the original pieces are actually exhibiting at um, Artist Run Chicago 2.0 at the Hyde Park Art Center. And um, so I wanted to really, um, they were taking on this direction where I wanted to really focus on the transit system and connections that people make in the transit uh, stations. And so it just took a different turn um, because of the pandemic and because of the quarantine and the essential workers that we started, um, well, most people started seeing um, that were essential, right? So like grocery store workers, farm workers, um, nurses, doctors, um, just ev everyone who, who, had, who became like the most essential people to, to having us uh, survive, right? And so um, this ended up um, uh, becoming a, a mixed media collage of um, some of that work. And I really wanted to tie in some of the neighborhoods, um, things, uh, any, anything that had to do with the neighborhood past and present. And so I really, um, as a graffiti artist, when you travel to and from places on, on the CTA, you, this is how, you know, you would learn about different neighborhoods and people and different cultures and what have you. Um, and so I really wanted to incorporate a lot of the elements that um, came up, came, came, came to me as I thought about, you know, Grand Avenue. Um, and one of the, the most uh, uh, prominent uh, places for me was, um, I can't remember what street it's on, but there's a flower shop just down the street on Grand between Halstead and Ashland. And then there's also Diamato's um, and all these other businesses that have been there for such a long time. And so these businesses have been uh, businesses that uh, were developed um, through migration and uh, immigrant people from, from Italy and other places. And so just wanted to point out some of, some of the, the things that, that already exist in the neighborhood. Um, and that through time sometimes become very vulnerable to things like gentrification and development and things like that. Um, and so just started thinking about all the people who really labor um, to make the business corridors what they are today. Um, and even though we don't talk about the people that are essential for these things and for um, our survival during this crazy pandemic, um, you know, I, I did want to, I, I wanted to honor that, um, in, in some way, because these, these pieces will be, um, in the newly, newly renovated, uh, Grand Avenue Blue, uh, Blue Line Station. So you can see the originals at, at Hyde Park Art Center, but I just wanted to share this, uh, specific, specific photo for just the intersection of how this, uh, um, installation that we did at the Hyde Park Art Center came together so naturally, organically, and kind of, it was kind of interesting that we were just, everything was just coming together and flowing naturally. So, yeah, just wanted to add that in there. Um, these are just uh, portions of uh, different murals that I've uh, worked on with uh, community uh, youth, families, uh, one in Humboldt Park and one in Little Village. Um, this is through the Brownwall Project, which is, uh, Delilah mentioned, a direct response to um, the Graffiti Blaster Program of Chicago. 
um, that is known to blast or sandblast, either sandblast or um, pressure wash, or um, as we see it on the south and west side for the most part, um, they just brown out patches of whatever um, the erasure, wherever the erasure is happening. And so through the same um, response, um, I've been able to work with um, youth and families and people from the neighborhoods. And so one of my series um, for the Brown Wall Project um, is called Flowers for Healing. And so um, just wanted to use a universal theme that everyone can uh, relate to. And so I've been painting flowers for, for a little bit of time. I think I started when um, my son was born, which was in 2008. Um, I call it like my graduation day. <laughs> It's like me graduating from doing graffiti street art or like, yeah, graffiti, not street art, but graffiti in the streets um, into being more responsible and <laughs> having having more sanctioned spaces rather than painting unsanctioned um, spaces publicly. So, yeah. Um, so I just wanted to share that um, in Little Village, it's a nature play garden. Um, and then Humboldt Park, it was a private owned uh, space. Um, it's, a, it's a corner building. So it, it, it um, uh, found Spalding and, ooh, Spalding and just, just south of Beach. Can't remember the name, uh, Potomac. I think it's Potomac. Um, so you can see that mural there. And in Little Village, it's um, it's on Marshall Boulevard in 21st Place. Um, and it's visible uh, from 21st Place. Um, it's a little bit of a dead end there. Um, but yeah, um, just wanted to share these two pieces. I think um, these nature-based themes for me make it easy for me to relate to people. Um, in the neighborhoods, um, because we all have, all cultures really have a connection to nature, I feel like, and it's just been one of the ways where, um, you know, we can spark a conversation and just start thinking about the importance of, of how we heal collectively and what we use to heal, and a lot of times we end up talking about herbs and gardens and um just having a peaceful space to be in right and so yeah um we're gonna jump into um mujeres mutantes a little bit um delilah you want to talk about um i don't think we need to read directly from there but we can just talk about it a little bit and how we um came together you're still on mute Okay. <laughs> um, well, we had been, um, so for, so for Mujeres Mutantes, we had been, um, like we talked about the, you know, fi founding it, like, right, fi founding the, the collective. But I mean, really it started with um, Synergy, which is a, um, a hip hop collect, a women's hip hop collective that started in that was in uh, part of the the University of Hip Hop, and uh, located in the Southwest Side at the Southwest Youth Collaborative. Um, that's where Gloria and I met, um, and where we started doing a lot of like volunteering and teaching, like the skill sets that we learned in the graffiti and hip hop culture. And um, one of the things, the major thing that I think we always talk about as we talk about Isela because you know she was so inclusive you know at a time where there was not that much inclusivity happening within the hip-hop community and um we're always so thankful to her because you know we model I model myself you model yourself you know after how you know being inclusive to other women and just being like yes you want to you want to collaborate you want to work together like let's do this and so, um, you know, when we, you know, that's when we first started doing our shows, we started like participating in, um, 
in the graffiti culture because we there was no space for women at the time. There was no safe spaces for women. Um, and a lot of the times when we, you know, um, participated, you know, we always talk about how we were, you know, the, the shield for other women because sometimes that, you know, that male ego would, um, would, would, you know, hit us, you know what I mean? We would be the ones in the line of fire, but we protected the, the women that we wanted to, you know, um, you know, that we wanted to like involve in, in, in this aspect and say like, you know, what? there's positivity here. Like it could be different and let's try to make, let's try to change it by getting more women to participate. And I think that's where Mujeres Mutantes like has a lot of its foundation from the work with Synergy, you know, but you know, when we, when we started, I, I remember having conversations with Naomi, she wanted to just have like, you know, uh, like she wanted to do, you know, walls, like paint murals and just have like all these women. But when I, you know, after I had my, my, my daughter, when I, you know, you know, we talk about giving birth, right. Um, it was, uh, something changed in me. I was like, you know what, I have to, I have to pass on the torch, you know, I have to, um, continue this work in a different way like as a mother like it changed me and I wanted to um not just to do graffiti or murals you know I wanted to like move past that and do more community work because I had been doing so much community work with um an organization that I work with in Pilsen called uh, Prose Art Studio where I founded the We're Hip Hop um, Festival with my youth so the youth taught me so much like they, I am so grateful to them because they taught me about what kind of art I wanted to make, you know, what kind of person I wanted, I wanted to be, what I wanted to bring back to the neighborhood, you know, because I went to the, the Art Institute, which was great, but it was like, there wasn't people like me there. It was a handful of us and we were all, we all knew each other. So I was like, I'm going to, whatever I learned there, I am bringing back to my neighborhood, back to my community. So Mujeres Mutantes was part of like us coming back to that, like me coming back to that, like wanting to, to whatever I can give, whatever I can like teach, um, however we can collaborate. I want to do that with other women because I do really believe in like pushing, you know, women and helping women and, um, you know, just there, that, the energy is different. You know, I'm not, not saying that I, <laughs> I um, I'm against men, but um, I feel like we need our voices are really do matter, and we are often not heard. And so Mujeres Mutantes came from, you know, wanting to, you know, not so much as to be against, you know, the men's club, but to be to to you know, what do they say? Fight, you don't fight fire with 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 uh, fire. You fight it with water with water, right? You know. So, um, you know, we, we, we founded the collective and we started working together. And I, and I, I always felt like with whatever we did, whatever shows we did or whatever projects we did or whatever events, like it's hard work, but it, when I would see the culmination of the projects, it was just magic to me. And so that's why I do believe in our mission. And I believe that bringing these types of arts to our communities was very important because we, art was so, was so important and even essential to us and to our upbringing. And, um, you know, we always say graffiti or hip hop saved my life. And that's really how I feel about art too, you know, um, that th this was something that was that was giving me my outlet that I needed and that I wanted to share that and teach that to young girls because I wanted them to be saved too. Um, Gloria, <laughs> what do you have to say? <laughs> I feel so like I guess I I, I'll just add a little bit um, of that um, to that. And I don't think I have much to add other than just like my own experience um, through that process. Um, Synergy was one of the first, if not the first, all female, all all women, um, femme 
we had LGBTQ before we even like just you know it was just all inclusive it was um it was one of the first um uh, collectives or or crews as we would call them um in the hip-hop uh, uh, culture that were active in all four elements so four elements of hip-hop um graffiti djing break dancing um you know uh why am I blanking? <laughs> uh, you know, the knowledge sharing piece, uh, all of that philosophy, the sharing of the philosophy of, of what true like hip hop, you know, is. Uh, and so being just being able to see how that manifested itself um, through just the the wanting to, to have that community um, was just amazing. Um, and for me, um, it was also a way to um again learn about different cultures and um have different type of camaraderie with with all all kinds of people um for me it was i was always immersed in uh painting with nothing but guys all the time and so that was difficult because i had to sit through some really um really problematic conversations and just kind of like um just take it sometimes because i was just outnumbered you know and um and when i did speak up it was just it just became something that wasn't um healthy for me and so throughout the years um having this space where uh women who were practicing their own art form within the hip-hop community um it, it did really become a safe space for me to um enact all the things that i really wanted to do um to to kind of like give things to give back right and so like i think that that's one of the things that um isela isela estrada she um she she was a dancer a, um she is a dancer she um uh, she's now a dance therapist and um she was a, one of the first b girls that i saw uh, get down on the linoleum floors and so that was really cool um i just always was used to seeing the men in like the little village garage where i you know um kind of started learning uh to be a big girl myself and so interestingly enough is i started as a dancer but it's just um even though i was physically fit and everything during that time i just I didn't make the cut and so like I just started painting painting just became like such a an amazing way for me to like really um get my fix of that adrenaline rush that I was so used to having because I grew up like playing sports um my whole life and so um it was just like a safe uh one of the safest uh spaces that i've ever had and it didn't even mean that the the space itself uh physically was the safety uh, the safety is everywhere where the girls were where where our group was and so that was really amazing um and so yeah what else can i add to that um i feel like you you pretty much talked a lot about um the foundation of of that and what that meant um for um mm um i think for for me mm what what it became is um it allowed us to see the intersections of how art like uh, current art or even diy art and like arts and crafts and all these other forms of arts um magically just like blended and and how we learned from each other um to to keep pushing um the collective forward um and it's definitely not easy we had i think we started with like 16 people at some point and we're now just four members in the collective and i think that um one of the things that my friend told me earlier is like hey if it's comfortable talk about those uncomfortable moments too of you know uh the growth uh the growing pains um because there there are a lot of growing pains within an artist run you know collective uh, or even spaces and so mujeres mutantes for me became that secondary um 
phase of having uh, some sort of safety uh, within my own uh, comfort. And so, yeah, um, what else, what else, what else? I think, I think that's it. I think that's it. I think I'm gonna um, push through and, and uh, present this. Uh, this is our installation um, that we worked on. Um, so it's a, like a very mixed media mural installation piece. Um, there's fabric pieces in it. There's um, Naomi's um, crocheting in there and um, our dioramas. And then the, the two outer pieces are the original pieces that you saw in the earlier slides um, that are going to be installed at the CTA Grand, Grand Line Station. And so it was interesting how that all happened because this uh, CTA project um, came about in, I think it was last October when I first um, uh, got to start working on this project. And by, by installation of this show and just creating the show for, or this uh, installation for Artists from Chicago, we were talking about how we're all just from different neighborhoods and how we moved so much and how, you know, we, we were lucky enough to have that um, exposure to being around different neighborhoods, like going from the south side to the west side, to the north side, to the east side, like just by learning how to use the, the CTA um, lines. And um, even though the CTA lines aren't necessarily the best to get to every single neighborhood, I think that it really allowed us to um, see the different types of neighborhoods and what each neighborhood had to offer and or how um, each neighborhood was similar to, to our neighborhoods. And so, um, yeah, I'm gonna pass it to you because I feel like I've been talking for a long time. <laughs> I think, I mean, we have these conversations, right, about, like, the train and, and traveling and, like, you know, being young and, like, going to different neighborhoods, like, you know, that I, I would never have gone to. Like, I had, I remember, um, you know, back back in the day when we had our... Um, our voice boxes and like in the within the graffiti culture that was like our voicemail we called it a box and we would say hey you know like meet me here you know so you get on the train and you'd go to this different neighbor that you'd never been to you know and like we were we were connecting in ways I I, I um looking back I feel like those were some of those fondest memories that I've had you know um riding the train sometimes just like you know needing to get away from my home, you know, and just be by myself and just ride the trains and like look out the window and look at the people and, you know, look at, at art, you know, graffiti, like graffiti art outside of the, um, out of the train, the buildings and like, um, you know, we, you know, go to different areas. Like I remember one time, you know, meeting someone just because like you're on the train station and you just start to strike up a strike up a conversation you know on the brown line where like I never would have met that person you know had I not had I not been riding the train and like you know taking my own journey you know my own beautiful journey and how Chicago you know the way the way it's built the way it, the lines that 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 define it the the way the streets are the way the alleys are like everything about chicago it's like this system you know um that has these these different neighborhoods you know and you know we talk about segregation and um what did what did our neighborhoods look like when we're segregated the way we are and um i think this piece says a lot about that you know like this the beautiful journey the journey inward but also outward of our experiences, like our collective experiences, you know? So, and it feels so very like homey to me, you know, like it feels like home somehow, but we're also expressing like this, you know, 
outer experience all come together and even though we have these different experiences so the beautiful journey to me really is that you know um a journey inward and outward and as a collective you know somehow somehow we were able to do this you know at this time during this pandemic work separately but when we finally came brought everything together it was like magic that everything just seemed to flow and I felt like there was this kind of like fluid thing happening like between the, there was these connections being made and even our, our pieces seem to like you know be 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 reflecting each other you know like they they just seem to fit together like a puzzle and um I don't know I'm very I'm very happy and I was very happy and jumping up and down when it was, it was, we were putting everything up, all the elements that we, much like a graffiti production, but in very different, you know, in very different space and a different, very different time, you know, going through like whatever we were going through personally and with this pandemic, it just, it just felt more intimate. Um, but yeah. I think. <laughs> I'm gonna share. That's Thank you say. so much, Delilah. Um, I'm just gonna move it forward because we're. Uh, I just wanna be. Um, yeah, I wanna acknowledge that we don't have a lot of time. Um, but, and we wanna get into some some of the writing prompts. Um, so these are some of the community murals that we have worked on uh, with each other, collaborated with um, one another. Um, I'm just gonna um, go through some of that. Um, we had a residency in back of the yards and um, this is where we really got to practice a lot of our uh, skills um, that we all each uh, brought to the table. Um, the table we had to build because <laughs> um, we kind of just Carve out, our, carve out our space sometimes, actually most of the time. Who am I kidding? Um, so this is, um, this was for the, um, uh, this Faith in Action event. And so we were um, in charge of putting together this, uh, this uh, temporary wall where we all did a mural and it was really cool. It was at Davis Square Park. Um, we had families uh, coming to us and uh, participating in the painting. We had um, children uh, painting with us. It was it was just a beautiful event. Um, I just wanted to share that um, some mural co collaborations um, with uh, Mujeres Mutantes members um, in the Brown Wall Project and myself. Um, and this is really just me trying to share do the skillshare portion of of what graffiti taught me right like we all um teach each other our skills or like new techniques that we learn whether it's with spray paint or we're sketching and things like that like i still carry a lot of that with me i often tell some of my students um it doesn't it, it it's no it's no use to me or to you know, it's no use to me to keep the things that I know and have, the knowledge sharing part, um, if I can't share that with people or if I can't like hand that over to someone else who can probably do something way more amazing than I can. And so like, I think that for me, that's part of my philosophy as well. And also that's rooted back into like the things that we were taught with just through experience with Isela, working with Isela and working with um, Mystify and working with all the, the girls, the uh, Garnettas of, of Synergy and um, just everyone that we um, collaborated with um, since we were very young. And so the left, left hand side mural is on board ups, um, which is um, also part of a project that I did with students where we learned about the history of back of the yards and why there are so many abandoned homes with boarded up windows and doors. Um, and so that became a really beautiful curriculum for me to develop and um, help them understand that 
no, it wasn't the violence as much as it was the jobs, the lack of jobs that there were that that weren't there anymore after the stockyard industry um, changed or pretty much left. Um, so the stockyards had had a lot to do. Um, the meatpacking industry had a lot to do with the reason why some of these homes were abandoned, um, as 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 well as other things, right? Um, so many other things, so many other factors, poverty, redlining, um, you name it. And so um, the one on the right was a mural that um, combined different flowers from uh, places like Puerto Rico, um, Chicago, um, and then just different elements of like uh, graffiti um, techniques um, that went into doing this uh, this uh, mural here on this one is on just east of Halstead. I believe it's just east of Halstead or between Ashland and Halstead on uh, Garfield Boulevard. We've also uh, done DIY exhibits. Uh, wait, wait. I just want to. I just want to <laughs> go back to that other. Yeah, I just want to add that you. You know, I just noticed this now, but. Um, you were doing these board ups, you know, like I know a lot of artists have recently been doing board ups, um, but this is not, this is one example, but you did other art, I feel like art interventions with your students where there was these boarded up buildings and you were painting them. And I feel like it's important to note that, you know, there's these, sometimes these art happenings um in communities that might not be getting the same kind of publicity that other um that other organizations are getting and um it's still the vibe, the work that you did with those board ups and with the youth is still is very important and i just want to honor that and say that you know i appreciate that you did that you know prior prior to covid prior to the pandemic you know a lot of people talk about how art heals now and we've been talking and uh, other artists have been say saying this for years and we're finally now at this time being heard, you know? So I just wanted to note that, um, you know, those, that's the Aronson building that was boarded up, you know? And, uh, you know, we talked about the message that that was sending to the community with all these boarded up buildings, you know, houses where people should be living in, but instead they're boarded up, you know? But um, now, Go ahead, <laughs> you can continue. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, we've been, you know, we've been painting board ups for, for a while now. Um, and so, I mean, I did paint during the pandemic um, some board ups actually with uh, Sara, Angelica, and Laura. And, you know, it was also a good way to, to heal together because we saw some of the worst uh, racial violence racial uh, gang violence um, in our neighborhood on the west side and like I don't think that a lot of places in the city really realized how how bad it was and so like I think that this um, specific intersection of these board ups was very was giving me such a hard time because I was like yeah I, I could paint all these boarded up buildings but what does that mean like why are these businesses really boarding up their businesses or why you know why why now right in some places you know it's 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 a normal sight to see you know places all over the west side have been boarded up for a long time just down Kedzie Avenue you see so many boarded up places that have been that way for such a long time and so when um when the murder of George Floyd happened and the uprising started happening here in the city and, you know, the bridges were lifted and all these things started trickling into um, the neighborhoods. Um, it was very difficult for me to say, hey, I'm going to go paint this beautiful imagery just because there's space there. And for me, I think that one of the things that I've really tried to um, pass on to younger generations is that you know we have to think more uh beyond the surface right and like yes it it is beautiful to have art yes art is beautiful art it does heal and you know but i think that one of the things that have been left out for that i've seen lately is that um communities community voices they're they're being left out in in many neighborhoods and a lot of them, 
a lot of the times the people in these communities, and I, I'm speaking about my community particularly um, in Little Village, where we don't have all the time a say of what what's coming up, and we just we're satisfied with whatever we have, right? In many in many ways, because we're so used to having nothing. And I think that um, it's really important to note that when you know when thinking about board ups, at least for me, I think that. Um, it also sends a different message in, in certain areas of, of the neighborhoods where like, you know, I board ups as, um, as ways in, in which, you know, some of these businesses were enacting the racism because they thought that black people were gonna come and loot their businesses. And so that, that for me um, made it really difficult to work on some of the, well, the very few board ups that, that we did, we did two, um, we painted two of them. And so really thinking about that and really taking into consideration um, the voices of the neighborhoods in which we painted, which were uh, for us, um, North Lawndale and Little Village, because that's where we were seeing all the violence. And that's where we, you know, we, we had to go out and walk our neighbors to, our black neighbors to the train. We had to um, be on the phone with them because we didn't know what was going to happen to them. And um, I'm sorry, I'm getting super emotional. It's okay. I mean, you know, uh, we didn't all have to say, um, I just, I do remember hearing sirens or listening to, you know, my citizen app, but it wasn't from what you've described, you know, um, what you had to go through. Like I, I, I didn't, I didn't experience that in my neighborhood of McKinley Park. And, you know, I felt you know, I felt safe in my neighborhood and, and I, and I, I did think about, you know, Little Village and Pilsen and other neighborhoods that didn't feel safe, you know, for black people. And, um, and it felt, it felt wrong, but also at the same time, you know, I felt like I knew it was a privilege for me to, to feel safe in my neighborhood. And, um, and, and know that my kids were, were safe and I was safe. So, you know, I'm, I'm sorry, of course, it's going to come up again, you know, um, like we, we talk about it, but like, definitely want to, um, and thank you for sharing your story and for, um, you know, it's, it's hard and I'm glad, you know, you're sharing it with us at this time because a lot of people don't know, you know, and, and I think this is, it's an important thing to, to share and for people to know you know, what you experienced and how you were trying to help your community. Well, are you, you okay? You want to continue? Yeah, I'm, good. I'm good. I just had okay. a moment. I'm sorry. It's okay. <laughs> um, it's okay. Oops, sorry about that. I uh, need to go back. I'm not sure what's happening to my screen. Uh, I'm so sorry. Give me, give me one second. I'm a mess right now, y'all. I'm so sorry. All right. Um, all right. Sorry about that. So I'm just gonna roll through this really fast. Um, um, do we have until seven or seven thirty? I can't remember. 
Um, these are just a few of the DIY shows we have, that we've had. We have, we have until eight. eight. <laughs> oh, wonderful. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, these are some of the shows that we've had. We wanted to um, really uh, recreate the Hello Kitty when it was just a Hello Kitty frenzy that didn't really relate to um, our communities, um, black and brown people. Um, it wasn't really, for me, it wasn't, at least for me, it wasn't relatable. This is one of the first things that set me off to um, really um, get out of my comfort zone because I had never worked with toys. Um, so this was really cool. Um, and we also had young people uh, participate in, in the exhibit. So we had really fun, um, engaging activities during the exhibit. Um, Pink Line Dreams was uh, a show that we wanted to do um, based on billboard art. Um, we wanted to create our own billboards. And it was uh, referencing anything that we saw on um, the Pink Line or just based off of the pink line because uh, this show was actually at uh, Cultura in Pilsen, a um, former artist run space as well in Pilsen that um, closed. But um, so this was one of the shows that was put together by Mujeres Mutantes um, and also um, was a collaborative experience. Um, we had an installation and uh, we invited uh, different artists, different graffiti artists, a lot of the uh, younger generation of women who are now painting graffiti um, really showed up um, for us and just for to have this uh, this exhibit. Um, but yeah, we, so aside from just uh, activating spaces, we're also um, creating these exhibits and um, I'll let you Delilah take, take over from here. Chicago. Sorry, we're having a hard time hearing you. Park and Chicago Transit will get a segment. We use the L as a mean hip hop culture. It served as a way to make meaningful connections with other BIPOC and allies in the Chicago land area. I'm sorry, I'm, I got. I got timed out. <laughs> okay, yeah, I think I think yeah. your connection was lost. Yeah, I think so too, because it started, it got it booted me off. Um let's talk about it. What train line do you connect most with and why? Tell us about a story you have riding the train how does the transit so we have a few writing prompts um because we talk about we've talked about the train and the l we're, we're we're speaking now about it as a metaphorical place but um as a young person that was what that was the only way i could connect to other neighborhoods and the only like access i had so I think about um, what, what, um, sorry, I'm receiving a phone call right now. <laughs> um, if I didn't have that access to the train, um, where would I be or who, um, would I have known the same people, would have had the same interactions to work or to, or to um, just to write it? and thinking about all these people that make up what Chicago is, you know, thinking about 
what their lives must be like, where do they live, um, what neighborhood are they going to, and like me thinking as myself, like this may be the only time I ever interact with this person on the train, and how vital it was to to Chicago and to our culture, you know. There's a there's like now I see this like disconnect with like, for example, our politicians and the people that live that are just living everyday lives, you know? And so I, I as a young person, I think I also had those those thoughts, but it's like, would I meet this person again? Would I interact with this person again if I had not been on the train and why and why was that? Was it important to me? And and for me, I mean it it was. Um, because it made me curious. The train made me curious about other neighborhoods and about other communities. And hip hop made me curious. And so a lot of my our work, my work, and you know Gloria's work um, is rooted in hip hop. You know, and uh, that that connection with the with the train and Chicago, and even the way that it was like developed, like these colors. And what do they, those colors signify? And what do those, na those neighborhoods mean to somebody? You know, and how like some people might get on, not get on, on one of those lines or, or get on one of those lines, you know, and how it's, how it's, uh, it's changing, you know? And so we want to think of, we want you to think about what, what would, what would the world look like for Chicago, right? with it with the train and what like you know um sorry i think i'm like going on tangent but like what 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 does it mean to you you know as a chicagoan as a native or a new chicagoan um gloria <laughs> gloria hello gloria I'm so sorry yeah, I was I was muted there. Um, can you ask okay. that again? I'm sorry. I said, "What is what is it? What is it? The train like? What does it look like? Like what? Why, why is it like we're talking about a metaphorical place? But why is it important to still have these like meetings? You know, these types um, of spaces, right? Yeah, I think these are the types of things um, that." Um, that we don't really we're subconsciously doing the meetings right we're meeting up people or we're like i'll pick you up at the train if you're driving or i'll meet you at this station or i, I think for hip-hop what it did is it allowed us to see some of the artworks and style different style elements in in letter form forms in graffiti it allowed us to see the different ways in which the environment on the north side um, shaped and formed the the styles that were coming from the north side, the styles that were coming from the west side, from the south side, um, etc. And so I think that a lot of that, a lot of that, I don't necessarily think that that, that it's been lost, um, but I think that um, we have obviously we're we're on Zoom right now, you know, so we have, you know, we we have different uh ways to access each other um and in the digital age it's not seen as not that it's not seen as important but at least it's not as uh difficult to get to places or or, or even explore places because we can actually just go on google maps and explore and zoom in and have these virtual like um visits to different neighborhoods, uh, visits to different parts of the world even. And so these are some of the things that I think that have been lost throughout time because of uh, digital, instant, instant digital access, right? And along with that, there's that uh, other form of uh, um, uh, instant gratification, right? And so we really had to work for um these spaces to uh to work for us to 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 allow us to to have that um community 
Um, so these prompts, um, we want to take a little bit of time for people to think about these questions and maybe write down some of the thoughts, some of the things that come up, whether that's in poetry form or short story form, or maybe just even a story uh, through experience um, um, to take some of these prompts um, and maybe share with us if, if you feel inclined to sharing with us uh, now, actually it would be, um, maybe we can take like a good um, two to three minutes that, um, to write a little something um, with these uh, prompts and then we can come back and, and maybe have the audience um, share a little bit of, of what they thought or what they wrote down. Um, um, ideally, these will be published later. Um, and so, yeah, we wanna, we wanna welcome you to, to um, write something right now for a good two to three minutes. And I'll leave the questions up. Um, we can leave the questions up so you can come back to them um, if you need them. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna mute myself for a little while, um, two three minutes, and then I'm sorry about that again. Not sure why it's freezing, but it's not allowing me to share. Um, something's going on, I'm not sure. Let's try this again. Oh my goodness. <laughs>
Okay. Hello, friends. Um, I just wanted to open up um, the conversation to um, some of the participants. Um, if you want to share um, at this time, we were, we were having some technical difficulties. But if you see the the right prompts or you have any um, thoughts or things you want to share, um, definitely um, chime in. And I will uh, mute myself. Um, I can I can go ahead maybe and, and share a little something from um, this writing prompt. Um, before I do that, I just want to say thanks again um, for this great event. It has been so lovely to hear you both sort of think through your work and, and the collective um, and yeah, and just get to hear your thoughts on on this project. Um, I guess like something that really struck me while doing this exercise is that I haven't necessarily stopped to characterize my own relationship to the train lines, which is kind of bonkers because I love the CTA. <laughs> I don't know how to drive. And so I, I feel very, um, and I obviously don't have a car. And so I feel really reliant on it. And um, I just love Chicago and I, I love getting around and um, it just feels like such a like blessing and resource to have access to. Um, but but I've never thought about like my own relationship in those terms necessarily to the trains. And what was kind of funny about doing this, like sort of reflecting on that first question was I haven't, I've been very lucky to not really need to go anywhere that I can't walk to during quarantine. There have only been like a handful of cases where I've had to get on the train since, you know, COVID picked up in March. Um, and it was, I, I now live very close to the orange line. And so that was, that's sort of the main train line that I, I know. Um, have to take. <laughs> but I used to live for six years. I was sort of off both the, the oh, orange and cool. I know. <laughs> um, for a while I lived both uh, off the red and green lines. Um, and it, it just like every time I stepped on, I had to sort of confront like two things, right? Which were sort of like the way the way that men interacted with me and sort of like opening myself up to harassment and danger and and how that um, feels like a very tricky thing to sort of be uh, to sort of have like be the primary association with the CTA, which you know like does feel like this thing that I'm really lucky to have, but also feels like I have to be very sort of cautious <laughs> navigating. Um, and then and also just like my own sort of not necessarily knowing like where in Chicago is like responsible for me to be in, is like a good decision for me to, to live in a particular neighborhood, like where am I contributing in a positive way? Um, because, I, and sorry, that maybe sounds like out of left field, but I'm thinking about the experience of taking the red line from um, my old apartment in Woodlawn all the way up to Edgewater where my partner used to live and just like watching the train go from mostly black folks to mostly white folks and just like what a jarring experience that is and like what a sort of microcosm of the very real segregation that we have in Chicago and just sort of thinking about my own place um, within it. So um, yeah, I feel like I've, I've talked for a long time, but um, those are sort of the, the two things that struck me. Um, yeah, thanks again for, for, hold, for holding this space. These are some other questions. Um, Thank you for sharing. Um, 
Yeah. They I think we're losing you, Delilah. I think we're losing Delilah. I cannot hear her. Um, but these are um, a few of the questions. I'm not sure if, if anyone else can hear her. I felt, I felt like as was happened too, you know, being helped by strangers, um, sometimes not having enough change, you know, <laughs> to get on the train and like somebody like looking out for me, um, was, was also something I felt like, wow, you know, Chicago is pretty cool. Um, but the, as far as, uh, the train and like seeing the differences and like, you know, going to O'Hare you know, or going to, or taking a red line to Chinatown, you know, like, um, I lived in Chinatown for a while, so it definitely would change from when I would work, I would go to work at, in the Gold Coast area, um, I was working at Starbucks, and I would get on the red line, and, and head to Chinatown, and everything would just change, and I always wondered, why, why is it like this, you know, like, why is it like this, and, um, now, of, of course, as an adult, you know, I've, I've more informed, but at the time I remember just being very curious as to how, why things were the way they were, you know, why did we sit at different, you know, at, at, at the different lunch tables at school and like, it's interesting to see how that, that also plays out in our public transportation system and how it creates, um, what it creates, how the neighborhood looks like, you know, uh, does anybody else want to chime in? I know I feel I've a, I've been ranting for a little bit. Um, I'm gonna mute myself. You can go right ahead. I'm gonna call on somebody. Um, how about um? Mario, do you want to share? Uh, sure. Can you all hear me okay? Okay. Okay. Um, so, yeah, thank you so much for this event. It um, has been so nourishing and insightful and um, also, like, basically the opposite of what I attended last night from 6 to 8 p.m., which was the... Uh, aldermanic meeting of an alderman that some of us on the call share. Um, so thank you for um, being the antidote to a lot of that uh, toxicity. Um, I feel like a lot, I didn't, I kind of mostly sort of brainstormed or um, made, made a list of different kind of stories from the CTA and uh, rather than sharing one of the, um, yeah, like many uh, negative experiences or, or like, uh, I think something I realized while I was making this list, um, Delilah, I think that you mentioned um, how much like, uh, I think you said something about how maybe like music was a big reason that you moved around the city. Um, and uh, I think that that's true for myself as, as well. And um, so I moved here in 2002 uh, and I lived in Hyde Park when I first moved here, um, but really went all over the city on CTA, almost always on my own, um, often to go to shows, um, a lot of like DIY, indie pop, uh, often woman led groups. And there's lots of parts of the city, I mean, tons of parts of the city that the first time I ever went there was for a show. Um, and usually alone and usually 
late at night. And many of those times um, I did so not realizing that um, the train wouldn't be running when I got out or <laughs> that the bus wouldn't be running when I got out. Cause I think often I would also be like figuring out on my way there, how to get there. And like, I mean, in retrospect, I'm sure I'm not like making myself sound great, but like it was who I was as a, I don't know, 19 year old. Um, and uh, like the first time I ever went to Logan Square was in summer of 2005. And I used to have a band and I had a MySpace page and this guy found me on MySpace and was like, I'm doing, uh, he called them $2 pop shows. And it was like a DIY indie pop shows that he did in his basement in Logan Square. <laughs> Um, so like that was the first time I ever went to Logan Square, you know, so I have a lot of stories of like what it was like to get off at, I think it must have been, I think it was like the Blue Line California stop and I had like a base and was just like wandering around like trying to find Francisco Street and like, you know, just so I have like memories like that and um, uh, one that stands out was uh, probably, I'll say it was probably around 2003 and I can narrow down the bands I was going to see to two because I think I only ever went to two shows at this venue, but it was somewhere on the Northwest side. It was either the band Shonen Knife, which is like an all women trio from Japan, um, sort of like very like pumped up, like pop punk um, or this band, I think it was called Couples, which was like a woman led kind of very screamy rock music band. And so I go to the show, uh, I took the red line and then a bus to get there. And, and I got out, you know, I don't know, 2 a.m. and was like, oh, the bus doesn't run anymore. And I didn't have a cell phone. I didn't have a credit card and I didn't have any money. <laughs> and so I walked, I think I walked like three or four miles to the red line, which ran 24 hours or was running again by the time I got there. So I basically, but I just remember this one night where I just like, and I'd never spent so much time on the North side. And I basically just walked I forget if it, it must have been either like Addison or Irving Park, but I just walked like three or four miles of it uh, at like three or four in the morning just to get home from the show. Um, so I feel like a lot of my stories about the CTA are about like fails also. Um, but yeah, like I feel like music uh, and like pursuit of music and pursuit of music that can be hard to find have a lot to do with uh, my, my initial mapping of, of the city. Sorry if that was a lot, uh, not, not told very well as a story, but I kind of, yeah, that's what I got. That was a very fun story and I definitely, definitely could relate. Um, thank you for sharing. And I think that music and, and the, the, you know, the train, there's probably so many more, more stories um, out there but I feel like the access to that space, those spaces or those places wouldn't have happened, you know, if it, it hadn't been for public transportation for maybe a lot of Chicagoans, you know, like I had said previously, like I didn't drive for a long time. So I did rely on public transportation and I do miss it now. I feel like sometimes I don't feel like myself because I don't ride the train anymore um, or take the bus and, um, you know, it was a lot of, I, I had a lot more time to think and like interact with people and just observe, you know, watch, you know, people watching. So um, I really appreciate your story. Thank you. Um, Sarah, do you want I'm sorry, Sada, kid, uh, do, would you like to share? <laughs> or Gloria? <laughs> I can share, definitely. Um, I have so many CTA stories. <laughs> it's kind of crazy um, how many of them I have. Um, I, yeah, I, I don't even know what to share. There's just so many um, stories. Um, I think I'm gonna stick to stories that are um, more uh, about um, how 
how the CTA really formed part of our culture and how it's, you know, how it's been um, part of the culture, the hip hop culture, at least for, for quite some time. So, I mean, when, when people were getting up, um, you know, we used, or they used um, the trains to, they used the trains as canvases. And for me, that was fascinating. Um, and I've, I've just been fascinated by that. And, you know, being able to, um, to be introduced to that at such a young age, I always just uh, really, I, I would just tell myself, like, I want to do that. So I have an older sister who um, grew up in the 80s. And so she was able to really inform a lot of my in early inspirations um for graffiti for art um and i think i typically like don't give her as much credit as i should um but yeah she uh with with her sharing of like music in the mornings when she was like aqua netting the the crap out of her uh hair um to get to school and stuff um you know just um being able to hear some of the early hip hop um playing on the radio um and then also like her her getting these magazines cuz magazines were like what um you know what we what we used back in the day to really um learn about um hip hop and graffiti um before there was the internet um, we shared through, you know, publications, and that was really neat. I was able, just being able to to have that experience, even though I didn't experience that for 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 too long. Uh, I experienced enough that um, it allowed it, it allowed me to um, it allowed me to to. Uh, to see different parts of the world and different trains that were painted and things like that and how um, different transit systems were used or being used by um, people all around the world um, to have these uh, similar um, experiences. And so, yeah, um, a CTA story, I think one of the CTA stories I have is that um, this was not on the train, it was actually on the bus. And I think that that's um, one of the things that uh, buses <laughs> buses are interesting um, because they have a different dynamic than trains do. Um, when you take the bus, you're more likely to be left closer to your destination. And so um, I remember one particular night um, painting on the Midway uh, Orange Line um, and wanting to come back home, but wanting to come back home at a semi-decent hour, which at that time was like one o'clock in the morning. Um, and it was one of the first times that I painted by myself in the dark uh, on, the, on, on the train. And so I was just like freaking out afterwards because there's just this rush that goes through you when you're just uh, out there just painting. Um, and especially when you're not supposed to. Um, and for me, I think um, I ended up taking, I think uh, it had to be the Western bus. Yeah, because it's a 24 hour access. So I took Western to just get home um, quicker and just, um, I don't know, I just, uh, I didn't feel like taking the orange line all the way to the loop and then back into at that time i think it was still the blue line the pink line um to 54th um and so i took the <laughs> i took the bus but every time i walked like as i was walking up the stairs the little steps on the bus and as i walked back to the bus um uh and um I uh, I kept hearing my backpack rattle. Like you can hear the spray paint. And I'm sure that you could also smell the fumes on me because I had been painting for a while. Um, and I think it was at that moment where I was like, okay, this is probably not the best um, 
decision I made um, after just, you know, doing something I wasn't supposed to, um, just to get my art seen, just to be visible to the community that was following my work, right? And so I think that uh, having that experience really allowed me to see how, um, <laughs> how some of these things weren't very good ideas. I mean, as now, as, as, a, as an adult, I'm just kind of like, why did I do that? That's terrible, you know? Um, those were really terrible decisions that I made. But they were also decisions that shaped um, the work that I do now. Um, and so I have to really um, be kind to myself about that. And so I think that in, um, and, and so, yeah, I'm just really, it's really interesting to look back at situations where, you know, graffiti, yes, graffiti was, um, was in many ways, um, as Delilah said, graffiti did save my life, right? Like hip hop saved your life. Like for me, graffiti did, truly saved my life because I, I don't know what I would have done to replace that. And I, I couldn't, you know, I, I couldn't see myself doing something else at that time. Um, and, you know, 90s were pretty, uh, they were pretty um, hard times, 90s, um, as far as like when it came to being on the street or just street culture in general, like the 90s in, in Chicago weren't, um weren't very uh <laughs> the they were the best some of the best years but they were also you know not the best <laughs> um and so yeah just using the the cta for me has been uh, one of the ways in which i've been able to um learn about art too like um I'm, i learned through just um uh I learn visually a lot and I also learn, um, I'm a tactile learner, um, but the visual elements of it allowed me to really like see different artists, different graffiti artists, use different techniques. Um, and, and so that really opened me, it opened me up to different, um, wanting to try different things and explore even within my own pieces. Um, so I think, um, without giving the CTA too much credit, right? Um, I, I did, you know, I'm, I'm very lucky to have had the access to it a lot of times, um, whether it meant like digging through the sofa to find the change to get on the train um, or back, you know, back when the day passes were um, like $5 um, uh, that really, that really helped to, inform a lot of the things that I know now and also um, allowed me to meet like a lot of different um, graffiti artists um, and so yeah um, I don't know if that's much of a story but that's just one of the stories that I vividly remember and I just remember like feeling so like exposed um, jumping on on the bus on the western bus so I think that um, these are, you know, we, we experience so many different things on the CTA. Um, I think uh, there's even like pages dedicated to, <laughs> to, to kind of um, show some of the things that happen on there. So, um, yeah, um, if anyone else wants to share, that would be awesome. I'm gonna actually go ahead and answer one of the um, questions that says um, what train line you most connect to and why. Um, I think I connect most to um, what used to be the the blue line, which is now the pink line, the Douglas blue line. 
Um, I grew up just a block away from it, um, right off of Douglas Park. Um, and so having that, um, yeah, having that, that experience of like hearing the train at night, um, you know, became part of like my everyday life too. Um, if it's quiet enough in the neighborhood, you can kind of hear the, the echo of the train. And so, um, I, uh, I connect most to what now is the pink line. Um, yeah. Um, We have how do we how do you connect with people from other communities? So, I think uh, that's one of the you know using the CTA to get to and from the University of Hip Hop uh, to meet some of the ladies when we're just um, hanging out, painting, or just having uh, workshops and things like that. Are ways in which I was able to connect to other people, um, but also like um, I went to a, a magnet school for elementary school and. Um, we had um, buses that would bus in different um, students from different neighborhoods all over the city. And so sometimes, you know, I, I'd want to hang out with friends. And um, I remember having to learn how to take the train just, uh, or the bus, use, use the bus to, to get to their, to their house, um, to be able to hang out and, you know, outside of school. Um, and so those are those are some of the things that I think um, I don't necessarily think that I really paid too much attention to back then, um, but I think that looking back now, these are just you know the CTA has has really um, been a huge uh, component in in how I've experienced uh, my life as a Chicagoan. Um, and uh, yeah, I think um, I think we're coming to the um, we're coming to the um, to the slide where um, what what the CTA has um, you know what how the CTA has um, has played a role role in during COVID. Um, during COVID times. Um, and I think that, you know, I, I, I'm fortunate enough and, and very um, privileged to not have to take the train, but I know that a lot of the community members in my neighborhood have had to rely on public transportation to get to and from work um, or to get to and from um, their destinations. So, hi, can you guys hear me? Yeah. Can you hear me now? I'm so sorry. The computer is going crazy. I spilled water on my touchpad, so that's why the slides are going crazy right now. I just wanted to let you know I'm trying to like move it where it needs to be, but just in case you're seeing a bunch of crazy stuff um, or it's moving from slide to slide. I'm gonna stop sharing. So thank you. Guys. Yeah, so sorry. No, it's okay. I think the same thing was happening to me. So it might just be something in the presentation. Yeah, it um, might just be. Is Mercury still in retrograde? I, I really don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I think so. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think um, just some of the you know I I'm hoping that um, wh whoever's here um, can. Uh, reflect on some of those questions um, and maybe write a little something, if it, you know, even if it's just a small five sentence paragraph um, to kind of talk about those things. Because I think that as we um, think about um, this urban development and all these uh, new things that, you know, um, are happening to this in the city, I'm really thinking about um, access and um, thinking about um, equity um, within the transportation uh, system. And I think that, you know, we, we are, 
for the most part, I think that the, the city is, has been laid out in ways where, um, you know, it's, it hasn't worked for everyone. And so one of the things that um, I know that I haven't been able to do um, through CTA or even back then, like I wasn't able to get to all these other neighborhoods that are just as awesome. Um, and, you know, uh, a lot of times, you know, the people who live in these neighborhoods don't have the same access as, as other um, uh, neighborhoods um, that have, you know, easy access to, to train lines and to bus routes. Um, just recently, I think um, the Ogden bus uh, started running again. So um, for me, that was, I mean, that that's cool. Um, but I was just kind of like, all right, well, you know, it's been, you know, it's been a long time. <laughs> um, and I'm glad that, you know, I'm glad to see that it's happening now. I just, um, but I do, yeah, I do want to, I want to see more people think about um, access to, to things that we probably don't all have to worry about, um, like transit and using public transportation. Um, and also how public transportation is shaping our culture here in Chicago, whether it's street culture or the art culture, um, really anything, anything um, that has to do with, with Chicago. Um, yeah, and I think um, we would have been at the, one of the last slides, which is really like just um, uh, thanking everyone for being here and then just sharing any, um, any thoughts, anything you took from this um, experience, um, anything that you wanted to share, if you wrote anything, um, if you, um, yeah, anything that you wanted to share, I think um, this would be the time um, to share more. Um, and I think, um, I think Delilah's waiting in the, um, in the waiting room? Um, yeah, she's in here now. Oh, okay, cool. Or at I least see how she I is, know. but Joanna, yeah. are you there? I think she just got kicked out again. Oh. I think she's <laughs> uh, technology. <laughs> um, yeah, but I'm just really glad. I'm not a big fan of technology, actually, um, but I'm really glad that I've been able to connect to you all today um, and share some of uh this work and some of this uh this journey that we've had um for you know for quite some time um and yeah if you guys if you i'm sorry if you all have any questions for us too that would be awesome um if there's anything we can answer that we haven't talked about Awesome. Well, thank you all so much for joining us tonight and for Mujeres Mutantes for sharing their work, uh, being vulnerable and leading us all in this workshop. Greatly appreciate it. And again, if you haven't been able to see the Artists Run Chicago exhibition, please make sure that you do. It's really, really great. And we have a lot of really great art and a lot of great artists who worked really hard on the installations and the exhibition as well. And you definitely have to check out the beautiful journey uh, that they have there as well too. It's a beautiful space and it's in our main gallery and you can spot it right when you come in. Delilah and Gloria, do you have anything else to add before we end or close? <laughs> Uh, actually, I'd like to add, I did put it in the chat, but um, if you want to um, share your writings your prompt, from the prompts that we shared, um, you can email them to mujeresmutantes at gmail.com. Um, we'd love to share those. Um, if possible, we would like to share those with your, obviously with your consent um share those on our platforms on our social media platforms 
um, and then do a uh, virtual, uh, a uh, digital zine with them. And then Delilah, if you have anything to add. I'm sorry, I got booted off. <laughs> I was trying to get back on. Um, so I missed the last probably like 10 minutes. Um, but thank you for participating. Thank you for listening to our stories. Um, yes, please uh, email us with your, with your, with your stories. And um, we would love to collaborate, you know, virtually, you know, and um, thank you. Thank you so much for having us and, um, and, for, and for, again, for listening to, to our stories. Um, does anybody else want to have something to share? I'm going to mute myself. Okay, I will share one more thing. We're getting a lot of love in the chat room, so I just wanted to share that. Um, that's, I, I appreciate the love. Thank you so much, everyone. Thanks for joining us, and thanks for being patient through our um, technical difficulties. Um, I know, I maybe I just need, <laughs> I, I need better internet, maybe. I don't know. Um, but thank you so much um, for joining us today. It means so much to me that um, that you all made the time to to um, attend. Um, hi, uh, Ellie. Would you like to share with us? Just wanted to say thanks again and great event. Um, yeah, thanks for holding the space. Thank you. <laughs> um, Mario, would you like to share anything? I know you sent a message in the chat box. Anything else you would like to add? Um, well, I'll just say thank you especially to Delilah and Gloria um, and also to Sierra and Sara and Ellie. I, um, I really value the generosity that each of you have offered in this space um, and generosity in coexistence with care and criticality. Um, and I think all of, I think you've really modeled that in a beautiful way and love you both. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you, Gloria and Delilah for sharing today. Thank you so much for being here with us tonight. And with that, we're going to end that. Please have a good evening and enjoy the rest of your week and weekend as well, too. Thank you all. All right. Thank you all. Yourself as well. Thank you so much Thanks. for all, your, all that you do. <laughs> have a good night. You all have a good night as Thank well. Thank you all. Be blessed. <laughs> Stay blessed and not stressed. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Cheers. Right. Have a good night. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>